Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael Romero and I just got glasses the other day. So sorry if it looks a little awkward, looks a little weird. Um, I'm probably not gonna be wearing these all the time, but I do want to uh, start wearing them more to get my eyes used to them because I'm not really used to wearing glasses. But uh, anyway, today I wanna talk to you guys about investing and making passive income um, with a small amount of money. So basically how to invest your first thousand dollars and the reason i chose a thousand dollars to um start with is because it's small enough for a average person to um, save up and it's large enough to actually start something with uh you could start with less you can start with five hundred dollars you start with a hundred dollars even doing any of these things um but I want to start with $1,000 because that is a good base to start at. So guys, before we get into this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button to appease the algorithm guys on YouTube because this is a small channel still and it helps out more than you guys know. Um, also, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and click that red subscribe button so you can join this little family we got going on. Once Anyway guys, so <clears throat> let's say you save up this money. Let's say you save up this money, you save up this $1,000 and you really want to start investing and making quote unquote passive income because not all income is not all passive income is actually passive income but because you still have, you have to put work up front so you start with this thousand dollars you finally saved up enough and you want to start so the first way to actually save up i'm sorry the first way to actually um invest this thousand dollars actually is to and i know i'm gonna get a lot of flack from you guys like ah, nah, i hear this all the time but trust me this is one this is probably the, that's why i made it number one it's the most important thing you can do and you'll get the highest return from it and this is investing in yourself guys and this could be uh books buying books buying courses um eating better uh working out just anything that'll really get your noodle working more efficient and the reason i say this is the most important thing you can do because you'll get the highest return from it because you're working for yourself trust me guys there's a bunch of books out there i got a bookshelf over here in the corner with a bunch of books and i read um not as much as i used to actually in high school i hated reading i got out of high school i started enjoying reading because i found like uh self-help books and like actual factual books like I have philosophy books, whatever, enough with the books in my whatever, but um, like The Intelligent Investor, right? Um, rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Richest Man in Babylon, uh, Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People. These books teach you things that you're not going to get from a formal education. And this is some of the, the best way to really amplify your rate of return on yourself. And even buying courses like uh, courses to learn how to trade options, courses to learn about credit, you know, how to fix your credit, courses to learn about how to eat properly. Just anything that'll help you grow as a person and, and just make that next leap in life. It could even be taking a vacation because if you're working constantly, 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 and you're, you can only do so much, you'll get physically tired and mentally tired and sometimes even spiritually tired. And you just need to take a little break and then come back to it. Now, the second way to invest your first thousand dollars is opening up a high yield savings account. Now, if you don't know what a high yield savings account is, it's basically a special savings account that the interest rate is higher than the average interest rate. So let's say if you're normal bank, whether it be, let's say Chase or Hancock Whitney or Iberia Bank, um, or whatever, they give you a 0 0.01 uh, interest rate on all the money you have in your savings account. Now, let's say you have a thousand dollars in your savings account. In one year, for the point a 0 0.01 uh, interest rate, you will literally be getting one cent. So, whatever Chase's interest rate is, whether it be 0 0.10 or 0 0.01 or anywhere in between, you'll be getting anywhere from that thousand dollars one cent to one dollar and that is atrocious that is terrible 
um, especially because we know that the average uh, inflate rate of inflation is uh, two to three percent. So if you're not gaining two to three percent, you're actually losing money. And you, you might be saying, well, how am I losing money if I'm not actually losing the money? Is because interest rate is, that's because inflation is beating your interest rate. Now, next best step is if you can't beat the inflation rate, you wanna get as close to it as possible. So there's several uh, banks out there like Wealthfront, Ally Bank, um, hell, even Robinhood is about to open up their own cash management app with a 1.8% interest rate. Me, myself, I personally have a uh, Credit Karma um, high yield savings account and they offer a 1.8% interest rate. So basically this means 1.8% of $1,000 is $18. So when you're generally making, you know, 0.01 to 0.10% interest on in, <clears throat> in a year, you're now, I don't know, quadrupling uh, 10 times that, right? Um, so now you're making one penny to $1 to almost $20 a year off this $1,000. And again, this is when compound interest comes into play because now next year, you're not only gaining interest on $1,000, you're gaining interest on 1,018. So you're gaining $18 plus gaining interest on the first year's interest. Um, and this is with only $1,000. If you add $1,000 every year or every six months or whatever a hundred dollars a month to this these accounts um you'll definitely see your money grow a lot more a lot more exponentially than it would in a regular savings account and um this is just a great way to keep your money working for you especially being that um if you don't want to risk your money in the stock market or anything like that this is the safest one of the safest ways possible aside from bonds and things like that <clears throat> but do be aware that at any time um, the Fed can change the interest rate so you are subject to fluctuations in your interest rate. So it might go from 1.8% to 1% or 1.5% or it may even go up to 2%, 2.5, things like that. And there are bank accounts out there with higher interest rates than 2%. You just have to look for them. Um, I think one of them actually called Redneck Bank, bank Account or something like that. Um, but um, so that's just one of the safer ways. This is just one of the safer ways to um, actually invest your money without worrying about losing it in the stock market if you're you know not ready to get in the stock market so guys next we have one of my favorites which is investing in dividends and this is a great way to form passive income and if you don't know what a dividend is a dividend is basically a payment you get just for owning a share in a company so if you own one share of a company if you own one share of a company they'll give you a small amount of money every either month or every quarter that you own that share. It's an incentive in order for you to continue to own that share, that stock in the company. There, and there are thousands upon thousands of great dividend stocks. Um, some stocks aren't great dividend stocks, but they still have, they still have a dividend yield. Some of them are, are great dividend stocks and they don't have a high dividend yield, but it really doesn't matter about the dividend yield itself but rather more dividend growth. So if you're if you have a high dividend rate, high dividend yield, but you're not growing, then I'd much rather have a lower dividend rate, but I know it's going to grow over the next 5 to 10 years. And this is your annual dividend yield going up. So let's say SPHD's dividend yield is 4.187%. Now, let's say you take your entire $1000 and invest it into SPHD. So 4.187% of $1,000 is $41.87 a year. Meaning, since this is a, a monthly dividend paying stock, you'll be getting $3.50 a month from this uh, stock. Now, after a whole year of owning SPHD, you'll be able to buy another share, which would then be adding more money at the end of every month. So instead of $3.50 a month, you'd be making, I don't know, $3.70 or whatever y y it is per share uh, per month. And once you continue to do that and you continue to add money into these accounts, you'll definitely see your growth over time. And, and not only will you be getting money from dividends, but let's say 
your stock appreciates 10% in one year. <clears throat> so you're not only getting dividends from the stock, you're also getting capital gains from the price of the stock increasing over time. And with these two combined, you can definitely make a lot of money over time, guys. So the last and final way to invest uh, $1,000 in 2020 would be REITs, a real estate investment trust. And if you don't know what a real estate investment trust is, it is a certain type of stock on the stock market. And it all deals with real estate. So basically, these are real estate holding companies. They own real estate all across the uh, world or all across the country. So these <clears throat> real estate investment trusts, they own money all over the globe and all over the country. So basically, um, these pay dividends every month, just like a regular dividend stock would, but instead, these pay almost 90% of the money they make to its shareholders. And it has to because there was a law passed in, I don't know, the 80s or 70s saying that this is how they have to be paid out. So they have a much higher rate of um, a dividend yield. But the good thing about this is basically you're investing in real estate without owning a tangible asset, without owning any type of property. So there's no maintenance, no landlording, no phone calls, no tenants, none of that you have to deal with. You literally just click a button. Now you own real estate. Now you're a real estate investor, but through a real estate investment trust. And the good thing about these is that they, you, a lot of them pay every month, but some of them also pay every quarter. The good thing about this is you can pick what type of real estate you want to be in, <clears throat> whether it be large warehouses, whether it be convenience stores, whether it be apartment buildings, um, hospitals, uh, senior living, just things, you know, there's a bunch of different areas to get into. And a lot of these focus on certain ones, on certain areas of real estate, but some of these, especially, oh, realty income, uh, focus on, I think it's 47 or 49 different areas of real estate. And this is a great way to diversify your portfolio. I actually own quite a few REITs in my portfolio, but you don't even have to start with $1,000. You can start with as little as $100. I think O right now is at a little above 80 bucks um, per share. But definitely do your own due diligence when it comes to these stocks, especially, you know, anything I told you guys about in this video, um, whether it be REITs, dividend investing, these high yield savings accounts um, and investing in yourself, definitely invest in yourself. Um, but anyway, so the only downside with um, these REITs is that you can't leverage your money out of a property. So meaning that if you own a $100,000 house and you have $50,000 of equity in it, usually you can pull out um, a certain amount of equity you own in that house to go buy another house. You know, you can do the, B, the Burr strategy, buy, uh, repair, rent, reinvest. I don't remember how it goes, but you know, you can do house hacking and things like that. that you can't do that with these uh, real estate investment trusts, but I still think that they're a great uh, asset to own in your portfolio. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you gained some knowledge from it. You actually took something from this video. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm to help a small YouTuber like myself. Also, guys, um, if you're still watching this and you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and consider clicking that red subscribe button so you can join this little family we got going on. Um, also, if you haven't added me on Instagram yet, it's either going to be on this side or this side. I'm probably put it on this side. Um, it's at Financial Enlightenment Michael. Uh, I post there pretty much daily um, about, you know, investing, personal finance and credit and all that good stuff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, all you have to do is click one of these videos. And look, guys, I'm out of here. Y'all have a great day.